in our world where everybody is so busy and you're watching your TV and you're looking at your phone, it's hard to actually play, enjoy your imagination and get your hands into it and move things around. And I want to help everybody learn how to do that again. Now, the biggest part of everything that we're going to do through this is having this community, having this opportunity to so that you can ask questions in real time whenever you need help. There are a couple of things that really will help you get the best out of all this program. First, I want you to be able to reach out to me. We will also be meeting using Zoom for about an hour a week. You need that time between meetings so that you have time to do the work. You have homework every week. So what I'm going to do is on these meetings, I'm going to show you the techniques and how to do the things that you're going to be working on. I'm going to show you what it looks like to do it. I'm going to show you some of the pitfalls so that you don't run into trouble as you go. But I also want to see what you're doing. So as you're going, if you're working on your project at the same time and you have an issue, you can ask me right then so that I can help you through it. We have some guidelines that'll make your workspace a lot more pleasant to use. I recommend you get a notebook. This is just an opportunity for you to jot down ideas as you go. If you see something kind of neat in the real world, in the big world, that you think you could use, you can jot down what you were thinking. If you're looking online and you see a cool picture or you see somebody describe something in a new way that you might be able to use, write it down. Work on things that need to dry first. Things that need to be glued or painted or stained or sealed or cured first, because if you do that, then as you're working on your other stuff, preparing your other steps, then it can be drying or curing or whatever, so that later on that same day, you might be able to continue working on it. You can also do things that need to dry or set or cure last in the day. When you first get up in the morning and you start working on your project, you can actually start and have it already be dry and ready to go. Next, I want you to think of cleaning up as you go. Clean your tools as you go. Put away your materials as you go. If your area is cluttered, if your tools are already dirty, you got to clean them. You don't want to have to start off cleaning work. You want to start off and be able to play. If you've used a piece of material, go ahead and put the scraps away. You may use them later. And don't throw them out. Even little bitty scraps can be useful in miniatures. Buy enough of whatever materials that you have for the whole project at once. It really is rough whenever you're in the middle of the project and you run out. Give yourself a break when you need it. Build in opportunities to break. If I'm doing a big project, say I'm putting all the brick on the front of a house, I'm not going to do that in one setting. So I'm going to do a little bit here and a little bit there. I may break it into four or five sessions. If you plan that ahead, it's so much easier to make it successful. Keep your pets out of your work area. <laughs> Cats and dogs love to chew on little things, and that's what we're going to be working on, little things. So if you've just spent six hours designing and building some beautiful little thing, and all of a sudden you come in and your cat is chewing on something, that's not any fun. This works for glues and paints as well. Some of these materials have interesting smells to animals or interesting mouthfeels to animals. We do not want your dog or your cat chewing on a tube of glue. Don't leave your tools on if you leave your work area. If you're using a soldering iron or you're using a hot glue gun, turn them off and unplug them. Or making sure that 
a hot glue gun or a soldering iron doesn't catch things on fire. Keep your first aid supplies handy. You're gonna be dealing with knives. You're gonna be dealing with hot things. As you go through, you wanna make sure that if you have a little nick, you could fix it pretty quickly and it doesn't ruin something that you've spent a lot of time on. If you need help with something, ask. Because if you're having to come up with some creative way to hold this and twist it this way and hold it that way, it's usually going to come out slightly crooked. Let's talk for a moment about the idea of scale. Scale means if you have something in the real world that is one foot wide, how big do you need to make the small thing so that it looks right with those things around it. We are going to be primarily working in one inch would equal one foot in scale. So they call that one to 12 scale. One inch would equal 12 inches. So if I have something in the real world that is three feet long, like a desk, it's three feet long, it would be three inches long in 1 to 12 scale. As far as your workspace goes, I would like for you to find a nice flat space that you can sit down comfortably at and have enough room to reach around. You want to be able to have a central area in front of you where you can work and then have some space off to the sides so that you can put things that need to dry or need to set without having to put them on the floor or in another room if you can possibly do it. If you decide to work on your dining table or your kitchen table, that's fine, but you need to be able to pick that up and put it somewhere else when you need that space. We have some basic tools that we're going to go over together. I'll start from one side and go to the other. This is just wax paper. It doesn't have to be this brand but I aim for the cheapest stuff available because I'm just gonna go through it, use it to protect my surfaces and then throw it away and I'm not gonna even think twice about it. And you're gonna need paper towels, obviously for cleaning things up. You're going to need a notepad and a pencil for taking all kinds of notes. Sometimes the notes are going to be things that we're talking about. Sometimes they're going to be things that, you occur, that occur to you as we go through things. You're going to need some kind of clamps. Now these are nice little clamps, but you don't have to have anything this fancy. Um, I also recommend, and I don't have it on here, but I recommend using masking tape. And this can actually be most of the time used as a clamp, or you can use it as a labeling thing. I do that all the time for both of those. Plus masking tape, mask paint, you know. Now, as far as paints go, I'm just showing two here, but it could be any kind. I use a lot of acrylics. Uh, it does not have to be this particular brand. Be aware that some brands weather better over time than others. Um, I just picked out a couple of different ones so you can see. Paint brushes. These are definitely by preference. Um, some people like using higher grade paintbrushes. I use every grade. I have some that here that are artist grade and I have some here that are super duper cheap because if I mess it up so badly, I don't mind throwing them out. I do recommend getting a selection of different shapes and sizes. I like a nice flat for doing bigger stuff. I like a nice round I also like different sizes, including one that is quite small. The one thing I will caution you is you do not want hairs to come loose on your paintbrushes, so periodically check them. Make sure that they're in good quality. Uh, if they're not, it's better just to throw them out and get something new rather than try to fight through it and pick hairs out of everything you're working on. You're also going to need some sort of a straight edge. This happens to be a small carpenter's square, but it could be just about anything. I also use a cork-backed steel ruler, or I'll use quilting rulers, which are clear acrylic. This is a quilter's ruler. Um, you can see your projects through it. Um, some of them have a lip on the bottom, some don't. You're gonna use a variety of different kinds of scissors, 
pick them as you need them, find ones you like. I like a very small set. And then I like a regular old set of paper shears. And I use both. And we're gonna skip the glues for a second. We'll come back to them. You're going to need some sort of an X-Acto style knife. This is a number 11 X-Acto blade and just a traditional handle. I like the ones with the lid, but if you even don't even have a lid, you can use an eraser or something to keep yourself from getting stabbed by that. Anytime you use a knife like this, you're going to need some sort of a mat. But you don't have to have anything this big for doing things with a knife. I've actually got several very small ones that I use. Some of them have grids, some of them do not. This can be used on either side. These are considered self-healing mats. Both of these are. That means you can cut on them and cut them on and cut them on them and they don't tear themselves up. But the beauty of it is, is you don't have to even buy a mat. You can use just a piece of corrugated cardboard for this. Something to where you have something to protect your work surface because the more you work on it, you would like to have a surface that maintains some smoothness and you can at least remove the corrugated cardboard and expose the tabletop. Tweezers, lots of different tweezers. Find your favorite, just find some that you like. Now you're gonna use a Sharpie or some sort of a permanent black marker quite often. So just find yourself a medium sized one. You can also use you can also use a thin one and you're going to need some sort of sandpaper. I like going for several different grades. This happens to be 150, but you can go all the way up to 320. So let's talk about glues for a moment. Your all around glue is going to be something like this Eileen's Tacky Glue. It's just a what they call a PVA glue. Um, it is a quick drying, slightly tacky, fairly thick white glue that dries clear. That's what's important about this. So make sure you have lots of that. Also try to keep it at room temperature. It, it gets significantly thicker if you put it in cold temperatures. Another thing that's going to be very helpful is some variety of a cyanoacrylic glue, which is a super glue. This happens to be Gorilla brand, but I've used lots of brands and I haven't found one that I purely hate. Be aware that some of them are gel style thicknesses and some are thin and some are very thick. So pick something that you like. I prefer something like a gel kind for most uses, but I actually have both. And finally, the glue that I use besides these is something like a quick grab glue or a E6000. Now they are not equal. Um, you're looking for something that is going to be a clear uh, silicone style type glue. So those are the general tools that you're going to need on pretty much every project. You will also need some sort of little applicator sometimes, or carving tools sometimes, or things that help you mark. These are toothpicks, just regular old toothpicks. This is an orange stick you can pick up at a box store or at a beauty supply store. It has two surfaces, one that is a flat wedge, one that has a bit of a curved hook sometimes. And this is a bamboo, bamboo skewer you can pick up at the grocery store. Now, obviously these aren't on, the only tools that will help you do quality miniatures, but they are a good start, a good first blush of it. Um, consider all of the other different hobbies and occupations that you find yourself in and what sorts of things that you like to use and could be useful to get the results you're looking for in miniatures. And this is gonna change your whole miniature career. There are just a couple of more things that I think should be part of every basic toolkit. Some sort of a sealant, something to protect your projects from dust and dirt and UV light and those things that life just throws at us. So what I like to use is I like to use some sort of a spray sealant that has to be clear, has to be truly, truly clear when it dries no yellow tint or anything else. This particular one is a Krylon UV resistant clear matte. 
that's the one I usually prefer. I don't necessarily like my projects to have a glossy finish. So I like matte and I can add a gloss later if I want to. You can also use a brush on version of a sealant. This is Mod Podge. There's two different kinds here. There are lots of different kinds on the market. This one is a matte. This one is a glossy. You can normally go get away with just using the matte. That's normally what I use. I will have all of this on a list for you and I will come up with a resource guide so that you can pick up something similar to this for yourself before we actually start the class. So your homework this week is to find yourself your workspace. Get yourself all prepared. Start gathering those tools. See you later. Bye-bye.